Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock Electronics, and uh, if you haven't seen the first video, it's linked below. This is video two. Uh, what I've done is I've created a uh, 400 farad, 13.5 um, volt capacitor bank, and uh, using old damaged supercapacitors. And uh, my last video ended with uh, it being fully charged and me letting it discharge for 24 hours, and my estimate was that it was going to lose 50% of its charge because these capacitors are heavily used and uh, weren't properly taken care of and uh, I was close to right but not completely right so I charged it to 12 volts yesterday around this time and now I'm getting 4.5 volts so the internal leakage is massive now part of that is because I've got these in, in, in series uh, each one of these uh, parallel rails is rated for uh, 2.7 volts at 2000 farads but then I place all of the cells in series with each other by these bridges and uh, we get some massive losses I saw them. The, the, I expected I would see about six volts today. Now, normally on, on with new supercapacitors, I would see maybe ten to fifteen percent of a loss over twenty-four hours, and then it would stabilize. Seems that this this uh, bank has stabilized at around four point five volts. Now, here's the interesting thing. So, if I measure each cell, each parallel cell separately, I get about nine hundred millivolts. That's where it seems to have settled when it was charged to about two point five volts each. So, I get nine uh, nine hundred and sixty-four millivolts. 991, 919, and this one is the interesting one, 678. So that's the only the top cell is the seemingly the only one that uh, that has a significant uh, a, a more significant loss. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I expected to see about six volts, and it's even less. So really, when I charge these capacitors up, all I need to do is connect positive 12 volts here to the top of rail. This is our main positive and negative to our bottom, anywhere in our bottom. And then I'll just plug it in and it'll start to charge. And I'm charging it at uh, 5 amps. And it'll start to, uh, the, the voltage will start to go up on the um, on the power supply. As you can see, it's starting to charge. but. Uh, Again, it's going to fall. So now, once this is charged, just for the sake of having some fun, I'll take a, uh, I'll take an inverter and I'll power something. Um, uh, so what I'll do is I'll place uh, the positive of the inverter on the positive rail and the negative of the inverter on the DC negative, the the ground line essentially, and that 12 volts will act to power a 120 volt AC device because the inverter will change 12 volts DC into uh, 120 volts. AC. However, I don't think that anything that I power will last long. I and mean, depending on what I power, uh, you know, it, it'll it'll it will uh, drain the capacitor bank much faster. So for, for instance, if I was to power a drill, it would just annihilate it. If it was to power a uh, a blender, it would annihilate the power. It would stop working almost immediately. But if I was to power a small fan, perhaps, or a light bulb, it should last for a little while. Now I've done experiments with uh, with massive capacitor banks in the past, much bigger than this, and and much uh, newer and well taken care of capacitor banks that actually retain power. I started my car with supercapacitors, but this this bank is a uh, it's a pretty big piece of garbage. Uh, these capacitors are just not in the greatest of shape. I got them if you don't know, I, I got them years ago uh, at a discount, and I just forgot about them, and I found them recently. So I figured, why not have some fun? Now, if you wanted to learn more about supercapacitors, I designed a uh, um, a doc, uh, an instructable years ago called a practical guide to supercapacitors and it's been fairly well received. I used to be a big supercapacitor enthusiast but uh, as I get older and the more I know about these the supercapacitors they have their places in electronics but typically batteries are a hell of a lot better than supercapacitors. Supercapacitors can 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 discharge their their current much faster than batteries can because batteries have internal a much higher res internal resistance where supercapacitors have next to nothing. And so we can create a massive massive discharge of current using these bad boys more than a battery, but batteries can hold more power in general. So I'll I'll charge it up. I'll try to find something neat to power and we'll just see how long it stays on for. Maybe I'll charge my uh, maybe I'll, I'll power my uh my uh, smoke absorber fan with it and we'll just see what happens considering it's right here. Maybe we'll power that. Okay, so I've got my fan plugged in but not turned on. It's plugged into the inverter. Um, I'm going to leave the power supply connected to the uh, 
supercapacitor bank to supplement power in the beginning just to see what happens uh, just so that it can add some power to it and then I'll unplug and we'll see how long it can last so I'll connect negative here and uh, I'm just going to want to come at this from a different angle here positive here anything come on what am I doing wrong here hold on sorry I haven't used this inverter in a long time there we go okay so the inverter says that we're seeing 11.8 volts Maybe I'll zoom in on it, because it's right close to the fan. Okay, so I'll turn the fan on and we'll see what happens. It goes down to 11.5 volts. So the fan on the inverter is running, this fan is running, and the, uh, as you can see, the power supply to the supercapacitor bank is now sourcing uh, almost four amps so as soon as I unplug power from the uh, power supply let's see how long the supercapacitors can power this inverter okay three eleven point three volts it should fail around ten volts I think so as you can see we're not sourcing any more power from our power supply we're sourcing directly from the inverters and we're powering this fan now, I don't know how, much, how many watts this fan is um, but I mean, if we didn't power, use the power on the on the capacitor bank to power this fan, you know, within 24 hours it would have lost all this power that's being used right now anyway. It would just be discharged uh, internally through leakage in the capacitors in each of the individual capacitors and through the entire bank. So we're at 10.7 volts, and the short, the smaller the voltage gets, the faster it's going to drain. Uh oh, it's giving us a beep. That's the low voltage warning. Let's just wait. It's annoying, I know, but I'm not going to stop the video. And Maybe I'll fast forward. We'll see how much longer this takes. And we're out of power. So, I mean, we're not out of power, but we're just above 10 volts, which isn't enough to power the inverter anymore. So I'll turn, I'll turn my fan off. Uh, it was a fun experiment, not much to it. Um, obviously, this supercapacitor bank is not, is not great. It, is, it was nice to power an AC fan for as long as it did, and it's not fully discharged yet. I mean, we've still got 10 volts in the capacitor, but we need more than 10 volts to power the inverter. So we still got 10 volts to use. However, it's not going to hold power like a battery does. It's going to discharge it before it settles, and uh, unfortunately, because these capacitors are so uh, old and they haven't been they haven't been treated very well, and they're all used heavily used, uh, they're just draining faster than they should. And so this capacitor bank, fun experiment. I don't think I'm going to go any further with this. I was going to actually charge up one of my old cars. I got a, a car outside that has a has a uh, bad battery, uh, but there's no way there's no way that this capacitor bank is going to uh, wake my car up. It's not going to have enough juice uh, to even get the to to even turn it over. So uh, this is where I think this is going to end. I would like to do another video, but I don't see the point with uh, with these specific capacitors because these capacitors suck. Um, but if you want to play with super capacitors, uh, cam cap the blue 400 farad super capacitors or um, the even the larger 25 to 3,000 farad capacitors. You can do a lot of cool stuff with them. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you haven't already, you can check out the Instructable, a practical guide to supercapacitors. There's a lot to learn there, um, and it's easy to follow. Take care and have a great day.